So yeah, Pumping Iron, this mythical film, like launched, you know, launched, you know, the acting careers or whatever you want yeah. to call it of Arnold Schwarzenegger and and Lou Ferrigno. It's like behind the scenes lead up to I think it's like 1975 Mr. Universe or mm -hmm. bodybuilding competition uh, in South Africa. So it's like Arnold, Lou, and a couple other guys like Mike Katz, they're like training and prepping. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, oh, there's Frank Colombo, R.I.P. Rest in peace. Arnold's good buddy. Yeah, that's like how I know him, like as like this like satellite figure to Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's yeah. like Arnold Schwarzenegger's best friend, Franco Colombo. You know, Tom Arnold is always telling stories about like hanging out at Arnold Schwarzenegger's house, and then Franco Colombo is oh always my there. Gosh, that's They're always like walking around in their in their <laughs> underwear, you know, lifting weights and smoking cigars. <laughs> like, this like opening scene is supposed to be like, you know, this is a bodybuilding movie. You're thinking you're going to see a bunch of macho guys, and look, they're doing ballet. <laughs> What's the world coming to? <laughs> and and she like she's completely unimpressed by these two guys. Yeah. <laughs> the posing, the, that's one thing from this that like, that seems more uh, difficult than I, I would have imagined. Like they're like, it's like figuring out like the best way to like show off your muscles. Before we get too deep into it, uh, this is uh, the Total Recall Show. We're talking about pumping iron. And I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design and Transformers vs. G.I. Joe. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can uh, check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Tom Scholey. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tune. This movie is, like, very instructional. because, And I feel like um, other, like, I don't know what you'd call like, other, like, hobbies or other, like, subcultures have sort of, like, looked at this and tried to, like, emulate it to, like, uh, get over their thing so like i would th the thing that's like comes the template to mind, yeah the thing that comes to mind for me would be like esports okay, where it's like yeah. when they were trying to turn esports into like a thing it's like look at pumping iron like you gotta have like characters you gotta have yes. rivalries you got you know and uh you gotta have like a storyline for like, like all king the, of kong kind yeah of? yeah or yeah king of kong stuff like that and and like th like this is it. and so the posing it's like Okay, bodybuilding is this like hobby, subculture, industry, you know, there's all these books and supplements and stuff. And it's like, how do you turn it into like, like a sport? Or how do you turn it into like, like, like an entertainment or whatever? And so it's like, you know, like, like, where's the, so like, okay, you add like a competitive element and judges and like, you're looking at the physique, but then it's like, we need a show. How do you get the, and, and so then the posing, posing becomes the show. And it's like, you know, you're making your, like, they call it like a routine or whatever. Like, you're yeah. making your routine. So it's like, okay, that's one way to, like, distinguish, you know, one person from, one bodybuilder from another. And, like, and, and it gives, like, an audience something to actually, like, watch, watch, you know. And, like, they're on the, they're on the stage, like, posing simultaneously. So it's like, somebody would do a pose be like, ah, It is funny. Ah, you can't see, believe you're you know, and, like, and that is, like, the way somebody can, like, distinguish themselves from the crowd because it is like uh, like you know when they have like the final pose down and like you know you do see like he does kind of have like a like a shtick or whatever that he does that kind of works and, and you do see like like Lou kind of like you know and then kind of like reacting <laughs> to his thing you got Franco Colombo he's like uh, he's also talking about like he, he's just the little guy <laughs> well yeah yeah because Franco Colombo it's like, like like they establish that in this that like Franco Colombo like pound for pound, like like proportionally or whatever, is like the top body built. Like he is the most like muscular or whatever. It's just that like his frame is much smaller. So like you put him next to Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's not as impressive. But it's like for what he has to work with, he he's like, like developed it more than more than anybody else. There's yeah. some scenes in here where he's like picking up a car. <laughs> like when I, you see Arnold in his prime, jeez, oh man, like. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it like like you do get it. Like 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 they do try to set it up like, you know, this Lou Ferrigno guy, he's 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 you know coming coming up with a vengeance and like, oh, uh, you know, Arnold are you worried at all? And, but it is like you just kind of see it's like like the you know, this Arnold guy is kind of, you know, unstoppable, you know, he, like he is the terminator. This is like the iconic like Gold's Gym at Venice. Yeah, Gold's Gym, yeah. And uh when you see Arnold like coming in and schmoozing everybody, it's like Oh yeah, that's why he uh, became like the governor of California. Yeah, he like He's... works the room, and so, there's there's like all these like kind of like power dynamics that go on, and it's very like 
um, you know, like very jock, like very, yeah. and, and very like, you know, the big dogs and everybody's trying to like, uh, you know, like, you know, like you imagine like where they're shaking hands, like each guy's trying to like squeeze the hell out of the other guys, you know, and it's like, oh, uh, you know, you're my friend. Oh, but I'm going to, I'm going to like play mind games with you, but oh, it's just a joke. But then, oh, it's not a joke. And oh, you know, oh, I'm, you know, when I'm I bust your balls, but I'm actually your buddy. <laughs> when I was little, you know, my mom was like, oh, you got to check, like, this is like, a, she would show up like Arnold movies and stuff. Yeah. But like, this is one, she would always sub, somehow know, be on the pulse of like movies. Yeah. So I, she was like oh, pumping iron. That's mm -hmm. like where Arnold start was. So I'm, in elementary school, I'm like, oh. What I still re always remembered was the uh, the guy stealing Ken or Mike Katz's shirt. Yeah, yeah. This, that, this, this guy who, who like, he looks like a bully. And, and yeah, like, he does. And again, like, like, <laughs> These guys all have like similar origin stories where it's like I was a kid, I was picked on, blah, 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 and then I started working out, you know. Um, and 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 they do like in this, they do set it up like like Mike Katz is like you know bullied all his life. He's working, out, and then and then they have this like other bodybuilder like bullying him yeah. and stealing his shirt. Now, this is like a movie I'd heard about, you know, growing up and stuff. I never saw it. Like I didn't, I didn't even know it was a documentary. Like when I was, I just heard that it's like you know pumping iron. It's a movie about guys. So I was picturing something like. I don't know, like DC cab or something. Like I was picturing like it's like all these like bodybuilders who like have to like you know solve a, solve a fight crime or like DC or like cab, or, yes. or, or like the, the barbarian uh, brothers. Oh yeah, or like or, or like uh, you know like oh the the gym is gonna get shut down, so we need to like get together and like you know stop the guy the, the guy who's gonna you know, wait. That's a great eighties movie. Like yeah, that's that's what I thought Please, this was like when Tom. I heard about this. So like, I was I was a fully grown adult. By the time I saw this movie, and like I, I didn't see it with like a child because like, as a kid, I could imagine seeing this as a kid and just like totally eating it up and believing everything that happened. Like I'm lo just looking at reality, and then like as an adult watching it, like sort of after like reality TV and all that kind of stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, this is like this is like made up. This is you know. Oh yeah, they 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 like um, have to like infuse drama into right. It. It's it's artificial drama. And, and like, and also like the way I saw it, it was like some kind of like anniversary edition of this. You know, I saw the, the movie itself and then there's all these like deleted scenes and like documentary about the making of the movie and stuff where they do talk about like, yeah, yeah, they talk about all the made up stuff. And so that thing of him like stealing the other guy's shirt, completely like what? made up for the camera, like not a oh real thing. Oh my God. Yeah, like, and, th and I think for this, you know, like the the guys that were trying to like turn, you know, bodybuilding into like like a thing. I think they were like looking at like wrestling. Oh yeah. You know? And so it was, and, and it's like it's like very like WWF kind of stuff where it's like these guys are actually like all friends. Yeah. And, and, you know, and 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 the, because they would show like it's a work. Yeah, exactly. In these like bonus features, they would show like these scenes where it looks like there's this one faction over here, and then there's one faction over there. And then, like, in the deleted scenes, you see, like, everybody's actually, like, all hanging out together, you know? <laughs> That's amazing. I, see, I didn't, I didn't realize oh, that. You gotta check it out. Yeah, yeah, you gotta find that, like, DVD that, where it's, like, the anniversary one with all the documentaries. And it's, like, there's, like, like, I don't know if it's, like, one of the producers or whatever of this movie, but it's, like, there's some figure in this who, like, is the guy who, like, publishes the bodybuilding magazines. Okay. And, like, so he creates these stories of, like, Bring me the head of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, okay. I love that. Yeah. Like, that. And, and it is just like a wrestling magazine. Like, so they're like creating these like artificial rivalries to like get, you know, get you, get you interested. Yeah. They come out and there's uh they have their theme music. It's yeah. like, Arnold's wearing an NWO t-shirt. I'm still uh, thinking about uh, the eighties, uh, Oh, the, that, the heist movie or whatever, or, or, it's center, or, or, or yeah, you gotta save, save the, 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 the gym. gym. And it has all these like wild characters. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about DC Cab. It's like they tried to make the Barbarian Brothers a thing. Yeah. Like it'd be in the, in the trailer, they're like the Barbarian Brothers. <laughs> it's like Peter and David Paul, <laughs> twin sitters, like starring the Barbarian Brothers and the Barbarian Brothers. It's like, hey, who the hell are the Barbarian Brothers? <laughs> But it's like, yeah, the, the gym's gonna close down. The movie's called like Steakheads or like <laughs> Meatheads or like Dumbbells or something. <laughs> dumbbells. <laughs> Bodybuilding has become like more of a thing 
than it was before this movie. But it's still never be like like it's not you know it's not at the level of like wrestling or something. Yeah. But, so like maybe this movie didn't turn bodybuilding into this like you know like fully established you know sport or endeavor or whatever. But it definitely like. Uh, you know, made stars out of you know, yes. like like Arnold and, and and Lou Ferrigno. This is their like uh, launch pad. I was watching this, you know, I was watching it on Prime, and so I assumed like a lot of the bonus feature stuff that I saw, oh, I kind of remembered as being part of the movie. So then when I'm watching the movie and it, it's not in there, I'm kind of like, oh, what happened to that stuff? And it's like, oh yeah, I'm watching like just the movie because like they had. They had like this one bonus feature. Maybe it's part of the movie, and I just like blinked and missed it or something. But there was one bonus feature where it was like they were doing they were at a museum and it was like an art exhibit i don't remember that okay yeah it, it's like and i was waiting for that scene and it never showed up because it was like one of the, one of the funnier ones but it was where like you know whoever's running this show or whatever they like rented like the the you know the you know some like new york museum or something, like the met or something like they, they rented some, some uh you know fancy schmancy new york museum to have an exhibition of artwork but the artwork is not it's not a sculpture it's not a painting it's these guys bodies is the artwork <laughs> and so they would have these like pedestals and then they'd all be like standing there just like posing and stuff and it's like that's the that's the art you know you know it's kind of you know and, and you can see how that would get you know some like media attention and yeah. show. but that was that was one of the things and it, and it's not not in the movie but it's a bonus heck? feature pre it pre uh there it's the original like viral uh, or like yeah. uh and it's like, oh, I want to buy that. So if somebody <laughs> buys Arnold shorts, <laughs> you know, here, here's Arnold kind of bullying this guy. He's like, you. Li he's like, when you're li when you're a little tiny dweeb, when you're a tiny uh, shrimp, you pose like mm -hmm. this. He's like, you want to pose like this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's giving him like good lessons. Like, yeah, like Arnold, like the way Arnold like comes across in this is like, you can see how it's, it's it, it could be off putting or whatever like his like personality in this and then you can also see how it could be appealing you know to some yeah. but it's it is a charisma it's a charisma and it is like it is kind of like like it, it is like something that you would see in like athletics or something where there's and and, and it, it's something you would see of somebody who does become a star because he is kind of like he's bullying but he's like doing it in the name of like jokes and then it's also like oh I'm fucking around I'm your friend <laughs> like and he's doing it as he's your friend but yeah, exactly like and it keeps friend, it keeps yeah. going and, and, and so you're kind of like kept off balance like like you know he does kind of keep like Lou Ferrigno off balance and then even Franco Colombo he kind of like keeps Franco Colombo in his place or something where it's like yes like, you're right you're, you're my best to... friend but there is a hierarchy here <laughs> yes we are best friends I love you like a brother but just remember I'm the boss and you're you're the, the second, second banana you know and, but, but I'm only joking but I'm not joking but I'm joking you know like it's 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 like interesting it's like it's like all these like kind of like uh you're... what social dynamic kind of stuff they they talk about which you know uh like I generally find kind of gross, yeah. but like I understand like like why people, you know, behave this way or why or what you know why it, it's emulated because like it it um, in like competitive fields I can see how it's like another thing to give you like a little like leg up a little you know competitive advantage. Yeah, because he was talking to that guy about like posing, but he's also talking about how he's like a shrimp and stuff. But he's intermixing like that in with his yeah, it's, like it's like it's like the poison is mixed with the, <laughs> the, the good stuff too. Yeah. So it's like yeah, it, it's you know like a little diabolical maybe. I don't know. Or, yeah, who am I to judge? Or but, him having a uh, dinner w or like brunch or whatever with Lou Ferrigno and his yeah. parents. But he's like being jovial, but he's like we're competing with um, yeah. We're, we're play I'm playing mind games. Oh, you are the you are of course you are the better <laughs> you are the better workout. There. Like like there's games within games and and yeah. and, it, and then it's like, you know, um, he like he's kind of ingratiating himself with with Lou's family, and he's like, you know, your mother's gonna have me over and she's gonna set me up with your sister. So it's kind of like, hey hey hey, I'm joking. We're friends. We're real close, but I'm also kind of like. The you're part of the family. Yeah, but, but and, and also like nobody wants to hear like, oh, you know, your your mom is is setting me up on a date with your sister. Like, what, you know, tell him like, he's like, was like, what the hell are you talking about, Arnold? Right, exactly. Like, like Arnold's just like going off on some like weird flight of fancy, some like tangent, and it's all all designed to kind of like keep the other guy off balance. You know? And he does it all the time. Like when he was talking to those guys at the snack bar, he's like, oh, the big gym. He's like. 
how are you doing? Is you tell, say hi to your brother, and he's like, but you, he's like, you're, you're a shrimp too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you're a schmoozing, like working the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and then the thing where they're like, like at the end where Lou and Arnold are like kind of bumping shoulder and trying to like establish uh, like yeah, a who's, just... <laughs> who's in charge kind of thing. Well, here's the bat my cat's backstory. Yeah, and again, it is like everybody's got kind of like variations on a theme, like a similar backstory of like you know bullying and stuff, and then and then. I, like it's it's the origin story that's in the, uh, the little cartoon, the little ad where it's like you know the, the bully kicks sand in your face. Oh uh, yeah, you know. I remember was it Charles Atlas? Yeah, the Charles, guy yeah, in, the Charles in, in, Atlas ad. Yeah, where it's like the tra <laughs> like that's that's the storyline. And then like I, I think maybe it was Michael Chabon, but like somebody kind of floated the idea that like you know like comic books have like all these ads for like Charles Atlas and bodybuilding and like karate classes yes. and stuff and like i think it was michael chabin that floated the idea that like you know, like the superhero narrative and then the narrative in those ads kind of like reinforce each other and like to the point where it's almost like is this comic basically just you know is this like story of like peter parker or whatever <laughs> is this just a way to sell bodybuilding you know bodybuilding products <laughs> you know like 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 were these were these uh superhero stories created and then the the uh, bodybuilding ads came along, or or oh, was it like you know, the, ads the other were there way? You know, first. Yeah. The, um, I would read my uh, cousins had the, the, some comics, and uh, from the seventies, and I would like look obsess over the ads when yeah, I was little. Count Dante. Oh know. my gosh, the Dojo Wars. We'll have to cover that in the uh, when we do our Karate Kid episode, and. Uh, there was an ad for like a hovercraft. Do you remember? Oh yeah, I remember the hovercraft. It thing. had like a three like pods. Yeah. I was obsessed. Like yeah. I, we, I, we should try to get our hands on those blueprints mm -hmm. for that hovercraft. There was like sea monkeys too, or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, all these like uh, empty promises. <laughs> I mean, the, like the appeal of this movie, like you know, you have these kind of larger than life personalities, uh, and of course, you know, like literally larger than like like the, you know the, the and, and then. Like the amazing '70s fashions with like the oh. huge lapels. And stuff. He has the puka shell choker. Mm -hmm. Also, I wish when my cat's loses or comes in like doesn't place or something. Yeah, yeah. I he, wish he I comes in like fourth place. Fourth. They're, they kind of rub it in. They're like, okay, here's the top three guys. Oh, by the way, like my cat's w was number four. If in case you're wondering, I wish I could handle my disappointments. Like he's like, how he's like came in first. To, good for him. Good for him, and I'm like... Yeah, I mean, if, if you... Like, again, if you see, like, all the bonus footage and stuff, like, these guys, they all travel together. They're all... Like, they all probably, like, work for the same guy. Like, they probably have, like, the same bot... Like, and so this guy who looks like Donnie most uh, <laughs> as a bodybuilder, not Ralph Ralph from Happy Days, like, him and Mike Katz are, like, best friends, and that, that shirt-stealing thing was, like, completely invented for the... Completely fabricated. He's the um, bully from Christmas Story. <laughs> like, he looks... Uh, uh, like, that guy with the red hair, he looks like like a 1910 strong man or something. Yeah. He's got, like, a striped uniform. <laughs> yeah. He's, like... He has, like, his barbell that has the two, like, spears <laughs> <Yeah>. on him. <laughs> you know, and this is, like... It's like another one of those movies where, like, thank God there isn't smell of vision Oh, my God. <laughs> like, these, like scenes, <laughs> these scenes are, like, all right when you're just, like, watching them on a screen. But if you could smell <laughs> that room, <laughs> you'd oh be Oh, my vomiting. gosh. I, uh, they're, like... Okay, we need, to... we need some footage of you uh, leering. <laughs> <over> the... <laughs> He's like, my cats, I'm going to get inside his head. <laughs> I'm going to leer at him from around the corner while he's posing in the mirror. Yeah, because if it was just like, if they showed you like the bus that all these guys pulled up in together, you know, like, and, and, and how they're all like just hanging out together. And then like, if they just, and then they come and they pose, if they just showed you that, that would be like one movie. But then it's like, no, they got to come up with a story like, okay, yeah, you and me, we hate each other. Yeah. And, uh, and you're going to steal my shirt. I can't believe it. Like that. Yeah. That, that's like the main take. They're like, what's the first thing you remember from pumping iron? I'm like, my cat's shirt gets stolen. Yeah, like, well, like, what, what does he even need his shirt for? Like, like they, they make it into this drama. This guy stole my shirt. Well, I don't say, like, you were just wearing, like, a Speedo. You haven't had a shirt on <laughs> yeah. at any point in this movie. Now you want to put one on? I think you're, like, a, you're clearly an exhibitionist. <laughs> you're pretty comfortable without your shirt on. Again, like, I didn't see this movie till I was an adult. 
but like you know there was like on Saturday Night Live there'd be the Hans and Franz oh my god and Cousin Arnold and oh uh, so like I knew all that stuff so like obviously all that stuff was referencing this I didn't know like the the thing they were referencing I just knew you know and the, the pump, pump. pumping up pump you, it'll pump the you pump up you it comes up. from this yeah you know, and, and of course like on Saturday Night Live they, they didn't um, they didn't have the balls to like give the full like pump explanation that Arnold gives what you know sort of like R-rated uh, <laughs> yeah. it's like I'm it's like I'm coming yeah down everywhere yeah like I don't remember Hans and Franz <laughs> talking about that yeah but it, it is it is interesting like the pump like that's another like famous thing from here it's like the pump the pump, pump. It's, it's like coming coming <laughs> he's like uh, the blood rush to your muscles feels like they're gonna explode <laughs> yeah it's like they're filling up with air <laughs> whoever wrote that <laughs> script for him to say like is not a bodybuilder it's yeah, like just some yeah. guy who's like so, so like they're, they're pumped up with air right air right <laughs> he's like do you have oh no my muscles ruptured it's pumping up with blood <laughs> <laughs> like can we cut this out of the script do I don't have to mm. say he's like, like like all these guys it's like something set them on the path at an early age where they are going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours in like a dark gym, you know, lifting up heavy things over and over. Like instead of doing all the other like kind of cool stuff you can do as a kid, like all the fun stuff, they're going to do this instead. It's like a so, solitary weird thing. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, like they, so they all have their origin story and they all have like the bully that they did or like the, the may, maybe they, you know, were skinny or maybe they were small or maybe this or that. Yeah, like this photo shoot here, like, you know, Lou Ferrigno is like, like they show footage and he's like, you know, right to like, <laughs> you know, two feet to the left. Like, yeah, you got like, that's like, the, I was like disappointed when I watched this and it didn't have like all that other, like, like yeah, you, you got to check that, that out. Stuff. Yeah. Because that, that's how I know this, because that was how I saw this movie was with all that other stuff. So wow. like, I am going to check that out. Like, they're like, uh. Mike, we're gonna have him steal your shirt. He's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Arnold is numero uno. I, I love the Ferrigno house. Yeah, it's like so homey and nostalgic <laughs> and warm, and uh, and the food, I'm sure the food's oh, amazing. There's his brothers, and his dad. He's mm -hmm. like a stage dad. He like retired just to like train him and get him in like. Don't don't you wish like your dad was as like supportive <laughs> and like loving and encouraging as Louis? Because he's like he's like, he's just like he he you know Louie, you're amazing Louie. You look you look like something Michelangelo carved out of, out of stone. Oh Louie, you're like you're a work of art Louie. Louie, when you get up there, you let them know you because you're the best. You're the best Louie. Yeah, I like that routine, like, because his, dad, his dad's got his eye on the big picture, yeah. you know, like, like, Lou is a young guy here, he's strong, he's, he's you know, uh, he's, he, he, he can do the stuff, but, like, you know, his, his dad. dad has, like, the experience and the wisdom, yeah, and he's, he's got a vision, he's got, you know, he's like, first, you start, and you kind of look at your, your muscles, like, hmm, there's some potential, like, and then, boom, you know, he's like, you know, he's, he's got his staging, like, if I could just put my head in your body <laughs> like because it's like when lou does his routine like he's not doing all the stuff his dad said and you're kind of like come on lou what about what dad told you, you know but he's like you know it's, it's just it's just hard when you're in the it's easy to be the guy on the sidelines you know saying do this do that but when you're you're in when the, the lights light. are shining bright and you talk about smell vision in these yeah. movies like that carpet in this like weight room like yeah moldy carpet it, it, <laughs> well yeah that was that was like another thing in the sort of like documentaries about the documentary was they were saying like you know and they were trying to create this contrast so you have like arnold training like in california at like muscle beach where you have like yeah. all this sunshine and then you have like lou training in this like hellish <laughs> basement so it's kind of like you have like the underworld and then like apollo and the sun and you know oh that that makes sense too in like uh Arnold was saying, like, he's like, I'm going to train with you, Lou. Remember mm -hmm. he was saying he was going to come, like... Don't make me come down and train <laughs> with you, Lou. Yeah, it's like, okay, we're best friends, but, you know, I'm in charge. Yeah, it is weird seeing, like, like a pre-Hulk Lou Ferrigno, because it's like, oh, when are they going to mention that he's the Hulk? And it's like, oh, that hasn't happened. I, like, this is interesting where they're talking about how, like, he just, like, got way into bodybuilding, and he started getting, like the old body like almost you know kind of reminds me of like 
you know, being like a comic fan or whatever as a kid where you're like, you start hunting down like old comics. He's, he like wants to be a bodybuilder. So he's hunting down like old bodybuilding magazine. So he's reading about like what, you know, guys were doing in like the forties and fifties. You know, like if you ever see any of those old wrestling magazines, this is like straight out of, you know. Bringing the, the head of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's like bad graphic design and stuff. And, and I, I, I guarantee it's like the same publisher, you know, like putting all this stuff in. You just like look at these outfits, and it's like, okay, here's here's some like fashion advice. Like, okay, I'm gonna try to try to build it. I was watching, I forget what it was. Um, I was watching some like documentary, and it had like, uh, you know, had like, uh, you know, saw like young Phil Spector, and it's like, oh, okay, there's where uh, Tarantino got the outfit that the guy who owns the um, who owns the strip club in Kill Bill. Like that. Oh. You know how there's the guy who's like yelling at like Michael Madsen, or yeah. you know, and he's like, he's 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 like wearing like like one of like he's wearing like uh, uh, Phil Spector's like denim suit from oh like when God. he like was recording with John Lennon or something. Uh, don't you want to have some whatever they're eating in the uh, Ferrigno house, like the chicken, yeah. or like the salad? yeah, and those bowls, like like my parents had those same bowls, you know. <laughs> oh, so good. You know, they like got them for their <laughs> wedding as a wedding present or something. Here's all the. Uh, the competitors like he kind of creates a narrative like when he's talking to Lou where he's like yeah if, if only this com if this competition was two months from now you'd be amazing you you you're, you're getting there you're gonna you're gonna peak in about two months it's too bad it's not it's not too much <laughs> yeah like <laughs> just like so these interesting jazz. mind games like it's it's just it's like kind of interesting to see like it's 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 gross but it's also kind of like okay this is this is how somebody becomes the king of Hollywood. This is how somebody becomes the governor of California. It's like you're just, it, it's it's like the competition just never stops. Like you're you're gonna like and like I like I wouldn't call it like cheating or whatever, but like it's like if you're if like two people are competing with each other and one of them is willing to do every dirty trick they can think of and the other one isn't. It's like. It's so tilted to the up, like, like, of course this person's going to win, Yeah, you know? I'm willing to do whatever it takes. But it is like, it is like, you know, if that, it, it's, it's a competitive thing, and so if the goal is to win, and win at any cost, I guess, like, this is, you know, this is kind of, you know, this, this kind of, like, behavior, you know, rewarded. I wonder if Arnold was like, why didn't they call me to be the Hulk, you know, like, after, you know? <laughs> Ravishing Rick Rude. When he cut a promo one time, I think he he insulted the crowd and called them like he's like all oh, you fat lazy summer. He called them SummerSlam sweat hogs. He called the crowd SummerSlam sweat hogs. And they booed him. <laughs> Louie, you're remarkable. Yeah, I, I love that line. I'm like oh, Louie, Louie. You, you look like something Michelangelo carved out of stone. What a character, yeah. Mr. Ferrigno. I should have worn my spaghetti string uh, Gold's <laughs> Gym <laughs> vintage uh, yeah, we tank had, top. We had like a Gold's <laughs> Gym like in my neighborhood when I was a kid. I didn't, and I didn't think anything of it. It was like I'd heard that like, oh, like Arnold Schwarzenegger is like financially involved with this, you know, that like he's like one of the owners. But again, like I hadn't seen this movie, so I didn't know like, oh, Gold's Gym <laughs> is like, you know. Famous. Yeah. They're always like, do 10, then they add a couple more on. They're like, two more, two more, three more. Oh, there he is. Mm -hmm. Louis. You know, and then Arnold, like, the big shock surprise is, like, he retires. Oh, yeah. You know, at the end of this. So it is easy to say, like, oh, oh Lou, you're going to be great in two months. And it's like, oh, by the way, you won't be competing you against me because I'll be out of here. You like, have a hollow victory. So when he, like, do you know anything about the story behind the story of him, like, of, of Arnold retiring? Like, what was the plan? Like, did he have something lined up? Because it's not, it's not like... You know, Terminator's like ten years away. You know. Yeah, I, I, am not sure. Like uh, the Hercules in New York, I think it was, was like, like the seventy. 60s. Oh, yeah, sixty nine. Sixty nine or seventy or something. Yeah. yeah. So and like that had kind of petered out, but like you know, obviously, this was taking place in seventy five, but mm -hmm. the movie came out in like seventy seven. Yeah. So like, so he retires. Like, what was the thinking behind? Like, I, yeah. I, I get that he wanted to like maintain a perfect record, but. Like was he executing some kind of plan? Because it and even like Conan was like eighty two, eighty two, yeah. Like so, 
Yeah, he, he had a bricklaying business with uh, Franco Colombo. Okay. <laughs> <His buddy. laughs> Are you for, serious? Or? I'm pretty oh, sure. Okay. I'm pretty sure. So he was like, I, yeah, I, I can't afford... Because, again, like, this, like, bodybuilding field, they were trying to turn it into... Some, just just like esports had, you know, this, like, you know, th- where they're like, okay, we're trying... We know there's potential. There's pump potential. <laughs> We've got a lot of pump potential. I remember when Arnold came on to Saturday Night Live and came on Hans and Franz. He's telling him, We've got a lot of pump, pump potential. potential. Uh, but like, um, like, you know, it's like we got a lot of potential here, but we still haven't figured out a way to like get these guys paid. You know, it was kind of like, you know, how do we get these guys so they can like make a living so that they don't have to have like their side gigs or whatever. Yeah. And like maybe, maybe it was like maybe even though, you know, Arnold was like a star of this and stuff and like may, maybe, yeah, like being like Mr. Universe or whatever was not paying the bills for him the way that like. Having a bricklaying business with Franco <laughs> Colombo would. They're like, uh, yeah, because he had like weird, like the, I think they were, him and Franco were doing the, their business in like LA mm-hmm. and he was going to go for like, go for it in the movies, like uh, mm-hmm. like audition and stuff. Yeah. And um, and that would be the way they kind of, I guess it's like all those legendary like stories of like uh, uh, Harrison Ford as a carpenter. You know? Yes. It's kind of like you could have like, you know, like kind of like a cool little business going that could, you know, could keep you afloat okay. while you're, and since you're your own boss, you can kind of like, Make you know, fuck hours. off and go to, you know, go, go to auditions if you want. The Lost Saturday Night Live movies, I think Conan O'Brien wrote a script for the Hans and Franz movie. Yeah, and it was like real close to getting made. I think I heard like Dana Carvey talking about it, or, or maybe it was Conan, it was on some podcast, it might have been Conan O'Brien's podcast, maybe when he had uh, Dana Carvey on, oh, they yeah. talked about it, but yeah, it was like real close to happening. And, yeah. Yeah, or like I've I've heard like the script and stuff. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it would have been amazing. Like like probably like the best of the Saturday Night Holy Live shit. movies, but there, it just didn't happen. There was another one too that uh, they did like a couple maybe like ten years ago. They did a live table read. It was Robert Smigel wrote the screenplay for it, maybe with Conan, but it was the script for the Bill Swarovski Super Fans movie. Oh, the the, the Bears. The Bears movie. movie. And uh, Martin Short was, they had him in mind because it was like the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And they were like, some villain was going to buy the bears. <laughs> like, if, if anybody uh, out there has a, uh, I've been like s- searching the internet for the, the screenplay for Bill Swirsky's Superfans movie. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see the Hans and Franz, uh, the Hans and Franz oh, my God. Uh, script. That yeah. would be amazing. Here's that Donnie Most guy, like, uh, uh, filming <laughs> B-roll for the, you know. <laughs> this movie showing you that he is like you know it's all it's all a work these guys who kind of like you know worship their own bodies and and you know, like it's like it shouldn't be shocking that like there's like narcissists among this this group of, of uh, you know people who worship their own their own their uh, job is to like spend physique. the whole day looking at themselves yeah, in, in the, the mirror. mirror yeah and, and being completely in tune with every little thing and also like like, like this. This is kind of like the embodiment of like narcissism because you think about like how narcissism functions, and it's like it's all about the surface, and it's like it's like um, you know like it's better to look good than to feel good, or it's like it's like better to look like you're in super great shape than it is to actually be healthy. So it's like better to like take all these steroids, have like your nuts shrivel up. <laughs> And stuff, so that you can, you know, look like, but but then be like fundamentally unhealthy. And I mean, like Franco Colombo, you know, it's you know, uh, rest in peace. You know, but it's like, I mean, that like just the things I'm hearing about Franco Colombo is like it's it's kind of a demonstrate. Like he wasn't that old when he died, and it's like it's showing you like okay, the the most in shape guy on earth or whatever is actually like incredibly unhealthy because this like lifestyle is unhealthy that it's like you know to sustain this kind of thing he has to eat several like he has to eat all this red oh, yeah. meat and stuff like and like that that and it was like heart failure that yeah. he died of so it's like that's you know and then you can they're all they uh you can tell they're uh doing some roids because yeah. like arnold franco and lou they all have like like it causes everything to like grow, so their like teeth are all like growing, like like their jaw, like every. Right, that's why everything. they get the separation yeah, they on get the, the teeth. The huge jaw, and then yeah, all, they all have like all this space between their teeth. I didn't even I didn't even think of that, but yeah, you're right. Like yeah, they all have like those like 
like uh, when, when I was a kid learning to draw and like how you would draw teeth. That's how yeah. the teeth are. What, what are the odds the three of those guys all have the same like? Uh, yeah, they have the jack o' lantern teeth. Jack o' lantern teeth. It's like a. It's like a. Uh, and that, and of course, like the, the shriveled up uh, testicles. testicles. <laughs> like I remember in in high school, like uh, you know, in health class, the like showing us a video like about steroids and the dangers of steroids and then they would you know say about how it makes you know your testicles shrivel up and stuff and then they'd be showing like footage maybe even from this movie they'd be showing footage of bodybuilders and then it would like zoom in on the crotches and show you like you know well they like, all this, yeah and of course like they're telling this to like a bunch of teenagers and stuff so like you know the teenagers you get like, back oh, what? You know. they give these guys a real scare because they're like all right in the in next year's mr universe competition we're having a not major. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they want to eliminate <laughs> steroids from from the sport, yeah, they all start sweating. They're like, "Oh crap, I'm in big trouble." Well, and like you know, you look at like a bodybuilder from like the pre-steroid era and then the, the post-steroid era. Oh, and yeah. it's like just two. We talked about that. Like Sean Connery's like right. This, <laughs> Sean Connery when he was a bodybuilder looked like Adam West as Batman. You know, where it's just like it's just like you know, oh, there's like no definition. Yeah, just this. <laughs> like barrel, you know. Um, yeah, and then and then you, the post, and I feel like it's only gotten like worse, you know, like like it like because like back then it's like okay you have these bodybuilders doing it, and then you have like baseball pl football players doing it, and then you have baseball players doing it, and then now it's just like um, every guy over fifty is like doing it, you know. Yeah. So you know you get these like you know jacked grandpas and stuff. Oh yeah, like. Um like Stallone now, mm -hmm. like, like, but even like non celebrity like it's just it's just like you know you probably like know some people who you oh know, like, yeah like, like you know Pap Pap or Pap, Uncle whatever or whoever Pap, who's like he's got he's like a thick neck st and, steroids are like more readily or like yeah they're, like there's the, the technology's just gotten like improved you know it's just Pap Pap looks like he's ready to rip out of his own skin <laughs> Pap Pap you're looking vascular they're like as fuck <laughs> human growth hormone and stuff you know. I don't really know the ins and outs of this kind of stuff, but it's it, like the, it is kind of like okay. You know, you got those like a couple of guys in baseball who like did steroids, and it was huge scandal, and they got drummed out. But then it's like you look at football, and it's like every single oh, guy yeah. looks like he's doing it. But it's like no, there's no. Uh, They're like, well, you better throw out the entire like '70s Steelers team. <laughs> it's like yeah, and then earlier in the movie, you had Lou Frigno taken a like eating mystery pills like on his like yeah on he his had his dresser. little yeah his little uh, regimen that was another like i was reading about like in this bruce lee book about how you know bruce lee was you know taking you know you know taking all these supplements and all this kind of you know kind of and i, I was just kind of thinking like oh yeah that's kind of stuff that i think of as being like a little more modern but i guess like yeah even like back in like the 60s and stuff there and again it's kind of made a comeback like i see like yeah. other people like like of our generation talking about like oh i'm doing like like just where it's like all your meals are coming out of this like jar this like gi yeah. giant may mayonnaise <laughs> jar filled with powder and that's like what you're eating it's like going on the total recall cleanse <laughs> yeah i mean like the total recall this is not a bodybuilding show like you can see like we're not uh we're not jacked or anything like we're next mr universe they're like all right we're measuring biceps Quads and nuts. <laughs> yeah, um, nut calipers. <laughs> a guy with like khaki bell bottoms, like <laughs> he's like the calipers they go like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of the, the calipers go like they do. The, <laughs> they have to go like. <laughs> On eBay, I bought a pair of uh, 1975 Mr. Universe nut calipers, <laughs> autographed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, like there's nothing more arrogant than like you know like a twenty something year old Arnold Schwar like that is is that who I'm trying to think yeah he's in his twenties like in his twenties yeah like a twenty eight year old Arnold Schwarzenegger it's like I'm sure he's the height of his arrogance I I'd just be reading all this like all these like Arnold Schwarzenegger exposés and stuff um, you know as a kid and it it was like I think it was like Arnold like it was like a Rolling Stone article and like. He got in a fight with like the reporter who's so the reporter's writing you know writing about it. he's like he's like i i uh met arnold at, at at some like la euro trash restaurant and he's you know eating the, the spätzle and all this kind of stuff. and then he's like asked arnold schwarzenegger if like he's like i asked arnold if uh, 
if the Terminator was like anatomically correct or, or like if the Terminator could have sex or whatever. And he's like, and Arnold was like, you disgrace your magazine. You ask me questions about the Terminator's <laughs> rod. <laughs> you, know, you are a disgrace to your magazine. I mean, for is the Terminator's <laughs> rod. Yeah, he's like, you ask me questions about ter the Terminator's rod. And then also like in this article, it was like, like that Arnold was talking about polishing the helmet. Like that was that was the first time I'd heard that term. I don't I don't know if that's like a term, but I heard about polishing the helmet. If I ever had to interview Arnold, I would be like recently at like he's like I'm here. I'm talking about uh, my new direct -to video movie was or the Expendables Five. And I'm like, could you, I'm like Arnold, could you elaborate on the Terminator's rod? And tell us about polishing the helmet. <laughs> or polishing the helmet. He's like, he's like. You are, it's a continuation of this disgraceful interview from the set. Like, how did you find it? He's like... Yeah, an 80s issue of, of, uh, of Rolling Stone. Uh, you know, it's like... Um, Lou, can I help you? Hey, watch what you're doing over there. How dare you ask me the question about the two knitters rod? <laughs> there's, all, there's all this talk about like, oh yeah, alphas and blah blah blah, alphas and betas and all this kind of stuff. And it's all like, you know, like, oh, trying to be top dog and like whatever you know, setting you're in and stuff. And it is like, like, this is, this is like the template. Like these, these guys are like the literal, like they, they are like, you know, physically the, you know, like, the, like, okay, this is, this is a guy that could, could like, you know, rip my yeah, ears yeah. off or whatever if I, uh, you know, do the wrong thing. I'm going to rip your head off like a phone book. <laughs> but now it's like, just like all these like twerps kind of like, being, I'm the cool guy in the room. Could you describe the Terminator's <laughs> rod? How you are dare disgrace. you, you are, disgrace! You are disgrace to your Total Recall <laughs> show podcast, your, your YouTube show. Arnold, Matt here from the, uh, <laughs> from, Matt's the only from the Total Recall show. Uh, what were you referring to when you talked about polishing the helmet? Lou, like Lou's lifting weights and it looks like he's <laughs> trying to do an impersonation of Humphrey Bogart. He's like, yeah, sweetheart. I'm lifting weights here, sweetheart. <laughs> lifting these weights out of the mouth to a hill beast. He says that you look like something sculpted by Michelangelo. Louis. Louis. Gotta oil up. Yeah, the oiling up, that's the other thing from like Hans and Franz where they, like, uh, you know, it, it, there was like a skit, it was when like, um, Arnold was part of like the president's physical fitness council, it was like during the first George Bush. Oh yeah. And, and he was on the president's Get a lot of, uh, Arnold in his blue t-shirt yeah. in my weekly reader magazine. Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah, and like, on Saturday Night Live, he was like on, he was there with Hans and Franz like as, as part of that kind of thing. And then, like, they'd be talking to kids about, like, you know, physical fitness and what to do. And so then, you know, Hans and Franz would be like, be like, oh, now we're going to tell you about oiling up. <laughs> you got to make sure. And then Arnold's like, no, you guys are putting the, the, the horse, the cart before the horse. <laughs> you know, you can't tell these kids about oiling up. They need to get physical fitness. They need to get physically fit. Oiling up, that's, that's the wrong thing to start with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then here they are oiling up. Oh like, God, it's yeah. like, okay, this is where all that stuff came. Like, I didn't get the reference. Like, I, I laughed and thought it was funny, but I didn't get the reference. I'm like, Arnold, Matt from the Total Recall show. When you were talking about polishing helmet, were you actually referring to bopping your bologna? <laughs> in, in, in this article, it was saying that polishing the helmet is a, is a euphemism for, for a blowjob. Like, that was what he was, he was, uh, when he was talking about polishing the helmet. How, how dare you ask me about the Terminator's rod? <laughs> that was, like, the other thing that, again, like, you know, like, you know, reading all these articles and stuff, and this was, like, you know, where it's, like, it's that, that arc that, that, that somebody's on as a star where it's like, in the beginning, it's like, oh, it's all positive, it's all positive. And then like, once they hit the top, then like, you know, it becomes like, you know, all the, the, the sort of negative, but it was always like, like questionable stuff. You know, this, like, this is kind of like his, this, this movie's like his finest hour, but also his like worst, you know, like yeah. all, all, all the, the, you know, things about him that, you know, make him kind of this like fascinating figure are here but then also like all these things that you know make them this charisma is one of those things it's like this you know so it's like you know is you know even though this guy is like you know the competitor and kind of like you know shitting on their son they're still kind of like oh yeah come to our house. house although it is like 
Like, I don't hear his parents saying, come to it. Or, like, I hear him saying, oh, your mother invited me over to have, have a delicious Italian meal. Yeah, no meal. one's invited But I don't hear... Yeah, exactly. Like, he's, cr- he's crafting this, this, um, this, like, flight of fancy that kind of, like, establishes him in the minds of the people around him as, like, being part of something that, that he's not a part of. Yeah. Like, no- it's a fantasy. She's like, oh, that's so funny, Arnold. Yeah. yeah. The symmetry, if I, if I develop something over here, then I got to develop something over here, too. <laughs> got to make sure all the muscles are all lined up. I, I am a sculptor. I am a, I am a sculptor <laughs> in my own flesh. And, and the difference between me and, and uh, a, a sculptor is that uh, they have it easy. They just, if they want to develop something, they just slap a little bit of clay there where I have to do the real work in the gym. And, you know. He's comparing himself to like a sculptor and to art, but then he's also saying like, oh, they, they used to fucking suck and I'm the real thing. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I'm the sculptor and the sculpture. <laughs> yeah, and then like, yeah, so I, I was waiting for that scene that's in the, the bonus footage of like all the guys like that. standing on pedestals and like, and, oh, and, and there'd be, like, drapery, like, covering the, And then they, like, pull down the drapery, and then there's, like, a guy. Like, and, and then there's all these, like, admirers kind of, oh, look at that. I, I bought that piece, took it up. It says, like, five years later, it's a skeleton. Like, I didn't feed him. Yeah, it's like, uh, I went to go do the, uh, into the, you know... After my workout, I went back and Arnold was unfortunately sculpting himself. <laughs> There's like Arnold's like <laughs> Colonel Tom Parker. Like that's... <laughs> to have uh, a, like a father as loving as uh, Lou Ferrigno's dad. Like he's like you know you see like, like they it, you know Lou does something and then they cut to his dad. He's like, got this like look, look in his face. Like, like that's my boy. Oh, here we go. This is Arnold. Yeah. he's... Now this scene, this is like the last scene of the movie, but then it's like, it, like I don't know, are they trying to reference The Graduate or something when like uh, Dustin Hoffman and and Elaine are in the back of a bus, like right in the oh here, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Lou and, and Arnold. I like how he has to have like help, to, he's so like explode, explosive, mm-hmm. too big, I gotta like, I need help taking my jacket off. Ah, two old chums. Looking at it as sort of like a WWE narrative or whatever, like, um, Lou is the face and, like, Arnold is, like, the villain. And so, so I can see why, like, when they made the Hulk show, they're like, oh, yeah, we want that nice kid from Pumping Iron. We don't want that asshole. As, you know? Yeah, he's like, sent, he, he can be the Terminator. Yeah, yeah, he can like be the, the killer. Villain. Be Hercules in New York, but when we got the real Her- when we have Hercules in space, we want this. One. Yeah, you know this the song. Like I kind of want to talk about the song because it's like this. The song is like the the theme song, which I like became like a hit. You know, yeah. it kind of like it sounds like ten CCs or something. Like it, it probably like was very much of its time, like in the seventies. Like it's not disco. You know, it's like it's like just like uh, you know we think of the seventies music we tend to think of disco, but it's like. Just like generals, like it sounds like ten CCs or something. But then I was looking up the people who made the song, and I couldn't find like it. I couldn't find like a, like I thought it would be like somebody like, like that, you know, from the seventies. Um. Pump it up. Mm-hmm. Not what you would a so like it's not a song you would think of for because you'd think it would be like you know like a like a movie called Pumping Iron about the like, guys like you'd be like bah, 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 da, da, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of like a like um, like, a, like a Randy Randy Newman, Newman. Newman. yeah, Randy Newman, <laughs> Ten CCs. Um. Everybody wants to be your bodybuilder. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like you know, you'd think about I want to rock and roll all night. Yeah, it'd be like some kiss, like, yeah, be the, kiss the, some testosterone kind of music. It's like um, be like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like hardcore or something. Oh yeah. When you got out there on the street. This is like my first time seeing this movie since, uh, and probably you too, is since the death of Franco Colombo. So it was kind of yeah, same sad. here. Rest in peace, Franco. Mm-hmm. Had a heart attack while he was swimming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, most famous guy to come out of Sardinia. And that was, like, the thing you heard about him was, like, you know, he would just, like, he was, like, like you know, just do all this stuff for Sardinia. Like, like you know, like, 
uh, you know, you know, whatever money he made, he kind of like put you know, invested in in yeah in the community and stuff. If you are polishing your helmet, <laughs> if you want to talk about the Terminator's ride, you're, you're a disgrace to your fine newspaper, but Rolling Stone. I'll tell you about the time somebody was polishing my helmet. A boo ba doo ba doo ba. The pomp. <laughs> the pomp. And like, so, so like, the, you know, the, all the like documentary stuff surrounding this, it was like, and the bonus features, it was like that narrative of like, oh, this, this kid, um, Luke Ferrigno, he's gonna like overtake Schwarzenegger. And so, like, it was completely made up. And like, the, you know, the fix was in. There was no chance. You know, it was just like, how do we generate a how do we generate a storyline for this these magazines that we're selling to get people to attend these events and then how do we generate a storyline for this movie we're putting together yeah, yeah like uh somebody in the uh, writers room is like i got it we got to have a stolen t-shirt yeah. <laughs> like, right what can, holy shit yeah what can you like i saw no evidence of any t-shirt <laughs> Like, they didn't show you the t-shirt and then show you it disappeared. You just see a guy show up in, like, a speed hood. And then yeah. he's like, where's a my t-shirt? Yeah. yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, the, the most, uh, the craziest thing that could happen in this movie is some, one of these guys wearing a shirt in general. He's like, he stole my Gold's Gym <laughs> t-shirt. Well, I see the culprit. There's Arnold wearing your Gold's Gym t-shirt. Yeah, he's got the fluorescent yellow spaghetti strap Gold's Gym tank. I guess, like, in this movie, you kind of have that, like, East Coast, West Coast rivalry, uh, too. That's, yeah. like, a big part of, of stuff. Like, Arnold's, like, already the Hollywood West Coast mm -hmm. vibe. And then you got, like, tough New York City, like, Lou Frigno. He's like, I'm from the city. Yeah, like, gritty New York. Like, yeah, like, uh, you know, Arnold is in, uh, is in like, um, you know, movie, like, you know, movies and stuff. And then, and then uh, Lou is in, like, you know, off-Broadway plays. You yeah. know, like, serious, <laughs> you know, Chekhov. <laughs> He's doing, you know. He's, it shows him on the stage in like a costume, like yeah, right. a puffy costume or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Arnold would be in Hamlet in um, Last Action Hero, I think. Yeah. You've been watching the Pumping Iron episode of Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and Transformers vs. G.I. Joe. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can... Uh, Check out my Patreon at patreon.com. Just search my name. And you can follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb.